If at some point you're confused by some concepts, watch my first video and come back to this video later. I will also cover fletching at the end of the video. The ebony arrow is very interesting. Its shape is nothing like what we see in historical findings. It basically looks a lot like a botkin type, but its tip is bent. This creates more of a knife on a shaft look. Now, funnily enough, botkin in Old English actually means dagger. One of the immediate problems that I have with it is that it's obviously not symmetrical, meaning it could have minor to major accuracy defects. I also think that this arrow has less penetrative power than a standard botkin. The tip is already put in a position where it's easy to dull or bend even further. However, ebony is a very strong metal, it's the solidified blood of Lorcan. The lore behind ebony basically comes down to a god's heart being shot on an arrow into the sea. The heart's blood becomes the ebony ore, and around the heart the famous red mountain formed. Given that Dwemer metal is stated to not dull, and Dwemer metal being inferior to ebony, I'm willing to accept the fact that a tip like this could work because the metal is just so strong it can't dull nor bend. That being said, I'd give the ebony arrow a 4 out of 10. The accuracy of this arrow would just be unreliable. If its tip was not bent, I'd give this an immediate 10 out of 10. Daedric arrow is probably based off the type 6 arrowhead. This arrowhead goes all the way back to the stone age, where it was made for hunting birds and small game. It features two tips, which increases the surface of this arrow while sacrificing on penetration. I theorize that the reason the Daedric arrow has a shape has to do with the Daedra philosophy. The Daedra think of mortals as lesser creatures, much like how we feel about small game. The reason why it's shaped like this could be an insult to the mortal races. Now there might be different types of Daedric arrows in their respective realms, but since these arrows are found on Nern, it's safe to assume that these are made to kill anything outside of those realms. I might be completely overthinking this, but I think this is an example of the level of detail and world building that makes the Elder Scrolls so good. Daedric weaponry is made from ebony and a Daedra heart. It's said that these items are infused with the Daedra essence from the heart it's made of. This means that these arrows are probably among the strongest arrows you will find. If my theory is correct, then this is a 10 out of 10 arrow on concept alone. Using this arrow against anything wearing armor is basically a lost cause. Therefore, in a battle, this receives a 4 out of 10. But I just love this arrowhead and my theory behind this arrowhead so much that it deserves a higher score. So I think a 9 is justified. The Falmer arrow, in my opinion, is reflectionary of the Falmer in their current state. The arrow is pretty terrible, but that might be intended. It has one long slim tip, which starts to broaden in the middle. Then it has a tip next to it, but it ends around the middle of the other tip. The reason why this is so terrible is because most of the force will be lost where the arrow starts to broaden. That means you'll get neither a deep nor a broad wound, because the arrow tries to do both and fails miserably. The material that this arrow is made out of is mostly from animal parts like chitin. That basically means that the structural integrity of this arrow is pretty terrible. Putting this all together makes for a pretty terrible and easy to break arrow. However, this makes sense. The Falmer are blind and aren't as intelligent as the other races. The arrow itself shouldn't get more than a 3 out of 10, but I like this arrow because it builds on the Falmer lore. To wrap things up, we got the Forsworn Arrow. The Forsworn or the Reachmen are a very primitive people. This is reflected in their armor and weapons. The Forsworn Arrow is extremely primitive and once again looks a lot like the Type 6 Arrowhead. Some good I can say about this arrow is that it actually is pretty symmetrical. Other than that, this arrow is made out of wood, which is probably the worst material so far. The Forsworn make most of their armor and weapons out of animal parts, indicating that they do hunt quite a bit. Because of this, it makes sense for the Reachmen to have their arrows be mainly hunting oriented. I'd give this arrow a 5 out of 10. Again, it expands on the Force One lore amazingly, but the arrow itself is terrible. As someone pointed out in my last video, I haven't covered fletching. So I'll cover the arrows of both this and my last video in this segment. Much like the arrowhead, the fletching is fine enough. It looks like it's attached with glue, which furthers the cheap arrow narrative. As mentioned earlier, the steel arrowhead is way too big. The arrowhead would weigh more than the shaft itself, which impacts flight heavily. The fletching is better. It's attached with a string and features a tear-shaped design. All in all, the steel arrow still sucks. 
The fletching of this arrow is also attached with a string. The shape of the feathers draw heavy inspiration of medieval arrows. The Orcish arrow's fletching has one major problem. It only has two tillers. Projectiles like arrows but also bullets do better when they are spinning. Having only two tillers decreases the reach of the arrow by huge amounts. Having three to four tillers improves the flight by making the spinning better. Unfortunately, the ebony arrow also only has two tillers. This means that the entire ebony arrow is a disaster, which could be fixed by making it symmetrical at the tip and by introducing another tiller. The fletching on the Daedric arrow is a bit rough. It looks like it's once again glued on like the iron arrow. It drives the primal narrative a bit further with its fletching. I can decide if this arrow has a string that's the same color as the shaft or if it's glued on. However, the fletching work is very shoddy, which corresponds with the arrowhead perfectly. Funnily enough, the Forsworn arrow actually has its fletching attached with a string, but the feathers reach further back than the shaft itself. This might be a problem if you actually want to shoot the arrow from a bow. Big thank you to Juan for pointing it out and helping me with some of these conclusions. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I appreciate the support on my last video. I will be finishing the series, so if you want to watch those videos, you could subscribe. Other than that, have a wonderful day and goodbye.